Well, I've just been listening to an interview with uh, Eckhart Tolle, and um, I'm reminded of in my youth, in the morning going to college, I could be almost springing down the road as if I could be about to fly. So filled with the loveliness of the morning and the body, just the body transcendent almost. And it's a a state of overwhelming appreciation of being. Overwhelming appreciation of the moment, as I think uh, Eckhart might say. Um, I didn't recognize the concept of God in my life. But certainly recognize the experience of joy. And at earlier times I had experienced, I think the first time I really knew it was listening to the trumpet voluntary of Aida. I found that so stirring that I felt a tingling race up and down my spine to my hair and was amazed. An elevated, transcendent experience just sitting in the lounge listening to a very large 78 revs per minute record. Um, you know, on a record player there, you had to change the needle occasionally. Dad's old records. It had them for many, many years. I was amazed that <coughs> I liked a piece of classical music. Um, I was moved later by listening to a piece that my mum really loved, which was Tchaikovsky's Pathétique. But the Pathétique is well, extremely sad, melancholy, in, at least in places. And uh, it didn't have quite the same effect on me, but I could see the... Um, magnificence of it, in a sense. But Aida stirred me. Hmm. In worship, I'm not attending a Pentecostal church at present, but in worship I'm translated. I sing. I'm too loud, of course. I I'm just away. And uh, I can feel the race in my body. A uh, combination of devotion, joy, I don't know how to say it, but transcendence. Uh, worshipping God. Mm. It's addictive. <laughs> um, you seek it out. Um, but it's not an addiction that leaves you um, exhausted or um, uh, with bad comparisons, say. It's an addiction that the experience of such leaves you blessed. I think it is um, most easily set in the bedrock of gratitude, of appreciation 
of all the goodness of God that you live and experience as you do. And so that I felt that the practice of gratitude, thankfulness, praise if you like, in terms of um, Merlin Carruthers Prison to Praise thesis of some years ago now, um, that practice, that habit, is the simplest way for anybody to experience transcendence. I don't mean it comes instantly, but it comes very quickly as you get in the habit of practicing, of being aware of whatsoever is good and lovely, and thanking God for it. Merlin took it further than that into the miraculous and applied it to even the disadvantages of your life, the difficulties, that he could say, thank you God for this difficulty. I trust you for it. I, my desire is to trust you for it. Um, I might not quite trust you for it at the minute, but I know what I want. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this difficulty. And every time the pain or the distress came to your mind, you said, thank you, God. It's as if you transcend what was a reality into a much, well, a transformed reality very quickly. And he experienced, and many of his followers from the book that they read of his, and myself, experienced the miraculous, the astonishing, what Eckhart would say were synchronicities that start to crop up in your life, or that you start to become aware of, it's both. And the overwhelming conviction starts to hit you that God, wonderful God, your dad, is with you. It's a fantastic release. And then your love and your joy, your devotion to him, you find you're in transcendence. Bless you, and you are blessed. Practice thankfulness. Whatsoever is good and lovely, think on these things. Anyone can do that. If you're really heroic, start thanking him for the minor difficulties too. Quickly you will extend it, and you will have mastered what was once reality. You have found life eternal. This kingdom of heaven is within you. And so is your God, your dad. And the way, as I understand it, Jesus, as I read it, not as I hear it from church, but as I read it personally in John's Gospel and John 17 at that, I take hold of the promises of John 17. They are for you. They are most definitely for you. Jesus there is talking of you personally. And me, all of us. Those who have ears to hear. And you do have ears to hear. There's no way you'd be listening to me at the minute. Bless you. And you are blessed. Thank you, Dad.